Okay, hi guys, um, welcome to my first tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to make Karamaki plugs. The first thing you're going to need is an instance of Wasp. For this tutorial, we're just gonna use saw waves. So I'm just gonna start off by drawing an envelope like so, but make sure you turn on this link button here and that will control the amp ADSR and the filter ADSR at the same time. Just draw an envelope like this and then take the filter cut down like so. Very simple. Now go to this cogwheel up here and then go here to the wrench. The first thing you're gonna do is turn on the arpeggiator. Oh, I nearly forgot. Set the BPM to 80 because that's what Mr. Carmack uses. I'm, I'm assuming that's what Mr. Carmack uses or this is just natural for me. But anyway, you turn on the arpeggiator by clicking any of these and then go to the drop down right here and click none. Yeah. Now, the next thing you want to do is set the polyphony all the way down so you don't want the notes like clashing with each other. And then in this echo delay fat mode um, window, drop down fat detuned, turn on ping pong delay, keep the time where it is, pan all the way left or right, whichever one you want, and then echoes down. So now the voices are nicely spread out and they're not like mono, like one single signal just clashing with each other when you press multiple notes. We're just gonna put a bit of time just to... There we go. Next, what you're gonna do is send it to a mixer track. So control L and then once you're in there, the first thing you need is an instance of OTT right here. Uh, it's free from the x website. I highly recommend it. Really good multiband compressor. And turn up, the turn up the out gain just slightly and then get yourself an instance of parametric EQ. And then what you're gonna do is go to one, change the order to steep eight, right click again, type low pass, no, no, wait, high pass. Always get those two mixed up. It's very loud, so I'll just turn on the fader. Now you're gonna shape up the sound. You can shape up the sound in any way you want, even like, you can, you can be a psychopath, you can, if you really want to, the choice is yours. But I prefer to cut them down like so. Take this signal down, by the way, scroll mouse wheel to change the shape of the EQ. And then turn this up a bit like so. And yeah, we're pretty much done for that patch. So I'm just gonna close everything down by pressing F12. And then the next layer is a layer of three times oscillator. And I'm gonna turn down, I'm gonna turn down oscillator two, oscillator three, and turn the chorus all the way down. So we have a low sub like so. And then in the cog wheel, open it up, go to the envelope tab, turn on the volume envelope, turn the attack down, hold down, decay down, sustain down, release down like this. And then I'm just going to turn this tension knob like a little bit like so. So the shape is like this, maybe add a bit of delay. And then in this wrench again, over here, click arpeggiator, any of the arrows once again, and then none. And then you should, you should get that, that yeah, that's what you want, that little... Mm. For now, we'll ignore the echo delay because we don't need that for a bass. Everything has to be mono in a bass. Send that to a mixer track, like so. And then the processing that I normally go through for a bass like this is fast distortion for a bit. Yeah, a bit more punch. And then <gasps> sound goodizer for a bit of meat, you know, that meat. meat. And then I like to EQ all this. Uh, I like to EQ this entire mess. So get yourself an EQ. And then we're going to go to the presets tab click here and I'm gonna select 20 hertz to 18k hertz cut and then i like to cut the low like so and then the high all the way down like this scroll the mouse wheel to do this there's a bit too much to, too much decay on it so i'm just gonna turn it down now it's a bit too too bassy or like there's not enough mids so i'm just gonna turn on oscillator 2 i'll pick this i'll pick the saw wave over here you don't have to do this every time this is just something i like to do to bring in more harmonics into the bass so it just sounds better so just turn up the volume knob like so yeah there we go now i'm going to make a quick chord progression so just bear with me for a moment okay so this is the chord progression that i wrote And with the bass we've just made, we're gonna take the root notes. So hold Control and Shift, select the root notes, the bottom notes of every chord. Press F12 to close the window, and then click here. Press F7 to open the piano roll. Control V to paste, and it should sound like this. That's too much. Let's just bring down the fader a little bit, a little bit more. There we go. 
And if your bass doesn't quite fit, like it's too much sine and like a little less mids, just keep increasing this until it fits. Yeah, it's just a matter of tweaking and adjusting until it sounds like the way you want it to be. And then after that, one thing I really love to do is take something like a kick and just layer it with um, some other stuff. I like, cl I like the clicky ones, so I'll just take maybe one of mine. We go to the wrench over here again, arrow, none. You got that. And then you're gonna hold shift to write a note like so, so it fits the whole thing. But we don't want the kick to sound like that. So let's send it to a mixer track. So control L and then get yourself an EQ. Right click on the low, order eight, high pass. Maybe bring it somewhere here. Just lower the volume. So it just makes it plucky. I mean, you might not hear the difference, but I do. Makes it feel like, you know, the pluck is actually knocking on something. It actually slaps, you know, just like that. Another thing that I like to layer it, layer it with is a lead. So I want, I like to make like a square lead like so. Envelope, attack down, hold down, decay down, sustain down, release down. Let's go to the wrench tab here, arrow, none. I'll just make a quick melody for this. This is the melody that I've come up with now. There we go. Uh, send it to a mixer track, so control L. I like to EQ again, take off the highs because the, those are too harsh on a square wave. Maybe order a steep eight high pass. Uh, the decay on this lead is a bit too, too short, so. Another thing I like to do is go to the wrench here and then go to the time window and then maybe add a bit of shift. I hope you can hear the difference with without shift, with shift. You see it's got that slight delay to it, which makes it sound way cooler. There is a lot more stuff that you can layer with plucks like these, but this is basically how I do it. Yeah, I just keep adding on and, and tweaking and tweaking until it sounds good. And you should do the same. But yeah, this was it for this tutorial. Just let me know if you want more of these. And yeah, have a nice day, guys.